we've been learning about the catechism and we've been learning about Jesus's redemption for us on the cross. Jesus died on the cross for our sins. We always talk about us in terms of Jesus's death on the cross. But what about the rest of the world? What else does Jesus's death redeem? This is our question. What else does Christ's death redeem? What else besides just us? Here's a, here's a question for you. Why are, there, why are there natural disasters in the world? Do you guys know that it was raining really hard yesterday? Do you guys remember? It was, it was wild. In some places, it rains really, really hard and there's floods. In other places, in other places, there's earthquakes. In other places, there's tornadoes and storms, mudslides, hurricanes. Yes, blackouts, yes. Why do those things happen? Why do those things happen? Let me tell you what the Bible says. The Bible says, God's word says, that not only does our sin affect us as humans, but our sin also affects the entire world. It affects the earth too. When man sinned, we deserve to be punished for our sins. But God, he also puts a curse on the earth. The earth is also cursed because of our sin. The Bible says that the earth is experiencing labor pains. So the earth is hurting right now. The Bible also says that the earth groans. Have you guys ever heard a groan before? Let me, yeah, let me give you a groan. It's like, ah, that's like a groan. Okay. The earth is doing those things and the earth is doing those things because of our sin. Now, how is God going to fix that? Because we know that Jesus on the cross fixes our sin. But does Jesus' death on the cross also fix the earth? Let's see what the Bible says, okay? Let's see what the Bible says. This is God's word. I want you to read it with your eyes, okay? I'm going to read it with my, with my mouth. Look. For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him and through him to reconcile everything to himself, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. That's Colossians 1, 19 through 20. Now, whenever in this verse it says his or him, it's talking about Jesus. And we're going to see two ways that Jesus makes things right in the entire world. Reconcile and peace. We're going to look at these two words. And Jesus reconciles everything to himself. Everything whether things on earth or things in heaven. So that means the entire world. That means the earth included too. He reconciles and he makes peace through his blood shed on the cross. Let's, let's look at these two words. Let's look at these two words and let's see what we can learn about these two words. So the first word is reconcile. The first word is reconcile. Now, when God says that Jesus reconciles things, what he says is that he, he restores things. That's what it means to be reconciled. It means to be restored. It means to be made right again. It means to make, be made whole again. Let's imagine for a second that you and your friend or you and your brother and sister, you guys are fighting. Okay, okay so you're over here. Your friend or your brother or sister is over here. You guys are fighting, and things are not right between you two. Somebody needs to apologize. Somebody needs to say sorry. Somebody also needs to say, I forgive you. Now, when you can do that, when you can do that, when you can apologize and when you can forgive and you can make things right again, that's what it means to be reconciled. That's what it means to be reconciled. It means to be made right again. It means that your relationship is restored. That's what Jesus does for us. But that's also what Jesus does for the world. That's what also Jesus does for the earth. He restores the earth to the way that things are supposed to be. So that's what it means to be reconciled. Let's look at this next word. The next word is peace. The next word is peace. When the Bible says that, that Jesus brings peace, 
It means that Jesus stops the fighting. Jesus stops the pain. Jesus stops the hurt. And not only does Jesus do that for us as humans, but he also does that for the earth, or for the world. He stops the hurt and the pain in the earth. Let's look at that example of people fighting again. If you and your brother or sister or your friend are fighting, you need to be reconciled. But you also need to have peace. You also need to be able to say, hey, we're going to move forward in our relationship now. We're going to stop the fighting and we're going to actually move forward in our relationship. Because you could just say, yeah, we're going to stop fighting and then you go off and you do your own thing, right? But Jesus is not like that. Jesus says, not only am I going to make things right again, but we're going to move forward and we're going to have peace. So there will be no more fighting. There will be no more pain. There will be no more hurt. That's why Jesus is so much better than anything else this world has to offer. Only Jesus can do those things. This is the gospel. The gospel is that our sin, all the bad things that we do, we deserve to be punished for it. And not only do we deserve to be punished for it, but God also curses the earth because of our sin. Our sin is so bad that it affects the entire earth. Are you able to stop earthquakes? Can you actually stop earthquakes? No, you can't. Can you stop hurricanes or floods? Can you tell the sky, hey, stop raining. It's, it's too much rain. You can tell it to do it, but it's not going to listen to you. In the same way, you cannot, you cannot save yourself from your sin. God's judgment is coming. And what we need to do is we need to trust in Jesus. Jesus died on the cross for our sins. If you believe that Jesus is the Son of God, if you believe that Jesus died on the cross for your sins, and if you believe that Jesus rose back to life again, you can be saved. You will be saved from the punishment that you deserve for your sins. And not only that, but you will play, you will play a part in restoring the world because God is going to make things right. He's going to restore the world, and he's going to bring peace. You can be a part of that by being a part of God's kingdom. That is the gospel. If you believe that, you can become a child of God, adopted into God's family. And I want you to talk to me so we can pray together about that if you believe it, okay? If that's the first time you've ever heard that. That's the gospel. This is our message. What else does Christ's death redeem? Every part of fallen creation. Every single part. When we're in heaven, when we're in heaven, when Jesus comes back, there will be no more earthquakes. There will be no more floods. There will be no more heavy rainfall and people are going to get hurt or things will get damaged again. Jesus will restore the entire world and it will be able to be a place where Jesus can be worshipped and honored by everybody. Christ's death redeems every part of fallen creation. This is the main truth. God's redemptive work in Jesus benefits his creatures as well as his creation. God's redemptive work in Jesus benefits his creatures as well as his creation. The earth will no longer be cursed. The curse will be lifted. The earth will not experience any labor pains anymore because Jesus will be here to make things right. And the earth will not be groaning anymore because sin and death will all be done with. There are four applications I want to tell you about. The first one is that you remember that God is holy. Remember, I said that our sin is responsible for the bad things that happen in this world. That's a picture of how holy God is. God is so holy that our sin affects everything, and God has no sin at all. We need to remember that God is perfectly holy. And this is how serious our sin is. Our sin is so serious that it affects everything. And we need to be forgiven. And we need Jesus to make things right again. Next, this should also give us hope in the future. Because while things on earth right now are wrong, and while there is pain and hurt on earth, we do have hope in the future that Jesus is going to make things right again. We can put our trust and our faith in Jesus. And finally, we can long for heaven. Heaven will be our home. We will not have to be suffering here on earth where there is death and destruction and where the earth is hurting. 
but we will be in heaven where God is king and he will make things right. There will be no more war. There will be no more pain or there will be no more natural disasters anymore. Everything will be perfect and we will be able to worship God uh, perfectly as well. What else does Christ's death redeem? Every part of fallen creation. I want to give you one more thing before we close. Remember I said that that why do natural disasters happen in this earth and it's because of our sin? Well, when Jesus comes back and when we are in heaven, not only is the earth going to be healed, but God is going to make a new heaven and God is going to make a new earth. It's going to be brand new. It's going to be better than anything you've ever experienced in this life. That's something for us to look forward to. It's incredibly exciting. And if you are in God's family, we can enjoy it all together. I pray that we will be there in heaven to enjoy God's new heaven and God's new earth and worship Jesus together.